Hi, I'm Miss Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library. Do you know what an aquarium is? An aquarium is like a zoo, but where you can see all different kinds of sea creatures like fish. Have you ever been to an aquarium? An aquarium can also be as small as a fish tank. Maybe you've seen one of those. It's very cool to see fish swimming all around, but have you ever looked at a fish darting up and dart down and wonder, how do they do that? How does a fish float? Why don't they sink? Well, today we're going to do an activity that shows you how fish can float to the top or dive deep down when they want to. I'll also share a story with you called Vivi Loves Science, Sink or Float. Vivi is going on a field trip to the aquarium where she meets a marine biologist. That's someone who studies plants and animals that live in the sea. Vivi learns some cool things about fish and discovers why fish float. So let's get started with the story. Vivi Love Science, Sink or Float, written by Kimberly Darting, illustrated by Shelley Johannes and Joelle Murray, published by Green Willow Books. Vivi jumped out of bed. She fed her goldfish Bubbles. I'm going to the aquarium today, Vivi said to Bubbles. I will see lots of fish, but you'll always be my favorite. The school bus dropped everyone off at the aquarium. Let's go learn about different marine animals, said Ms. Cousteau, Vivi's science teacher. Vivi loved marine biology. She could not wait to meet the marine biologist at the aquarium. Vivi had a list of questions ready. Do fish get sunburned? Why do fish float? Do all fish need gills? Is a seahorse a fish? What is the smallest fish? Can starfish swim? Is an electric eel really electric? Do flying fish really fly? First, the class touched the stingrays. Vivi was surprised to feel the rough texture of their skin. Next, the class observed the sea lions. Vivi didn't know sea lions could swim so fast. Then they visited the sea turtles. One turtle was at least 75 years old. The class gathered at the tropical tank. The tank was filled with fish and marine animals in all shapes, sizes, and colors. A group of bright blue fish swirled by. Look, they're in school too, said Vivi. That is a school of blue tanks, said Miss Cousteau. Let's see if we can identify some of the other sea creatures. I see an octopus, Graham said. There is a clownfish, Vivi said. They hide in sea anemones. Wow, that hammerhead shark is huge, Graham said. Well, sharks don't have to hide from anything, Vivi said. Graham pointed at a fish resting in the sand. Is there something wrong with that one, he asked. No, that's a flounder, Miss Cousteau said. Aren't fish supposed to swim, asked Graham. A flounder is a species of flatfish, said Miss Cousteau. It can swim, but it likes to sink to the sand and hide. What makes a fish sink or float? asked Vivi. Good question, Miss Cousteau said. Let's ask Dr. Fisher. She smiled at the scientist who had joined them at the tank. Dr. Fisher is a marine biologist, said Miss Cousteau. She studies the ocean and everything that lives in it. This was exactly what Vivi had been waiting for. Does anyone know why fish sink or float? asked Dr. Fisher. Uh, is it because of their fins? said Vivi. Good 
guess, said Dr. Fisher. It's because of a special organ called a swim bladder. What's that? asked Mia. A swim bladder is an inflatable sac that fills with air, sort of like our lungs or a balloon, said Dr. Fisher. Let's go to the lab and make our own swim bladders so you can see how they work. Dr. Fisher smiled and led the way. This is going to be fun! The swim bladder helps the fish change its density, said Dr. Fisher. Which helps it sink or float, said Vivi. Dr. Fisher nodded. Exactly! Let's see how it works! Dr. Fisher handed out the worksheets for the experiment. Use the materials at your station, she said, and let's investigate. Vivi and our team followed the lab instructions. Vivi pushed one end of a long plastic tube through the opening of the balloon. Graham taped it up tight. Mia put the balloon into a glass bottle. Benji taped the tube into the bottle opening. What do you think will happen when you put your bottle in the water? asked Dr. Fisher. Will it sink or float? The glass feels heavy, so I bet it'll sink, said Mia. Vivi put their bottle into the tub. The bottle filled with water and sank to the bottom. Does anyone know why the bottle sank? asked Dr. Fisher. Because our balloon is empty, Vivi said. Good observation, said Dr. Fisher. The bottle filled with water when you put it into the tub. It, it was too dense to float, said Graham. You got it, said Dr. Fisher. What do you think will happen if we inflate the balloon, said Dr. Fisher. Let's find out, Graham said. Benji blew into the tube. Air filled the balloon, and as the balloon grew, the bottle rose to the surface. It's floating, said Graham. That's because the air in the balloon is much lighter than the water, said Dr. Fisher. So the bottle is not as dense anymore, said Vivi. Let's deflate the balloon and see what happens, Graham said. Benji uncovered the tube and the air started to escape. The bottle began to fill with water and become heavier. Look, it is sinking again, said Vivi. Can you see how this activity mimics a fish? Dr. Fisher asked. Now it looks like a flounder, said Graham. I get it, Vivi said. The bottle is our fish. And the balloon is its swim bladder, Benji said. Which helps it sink or float, said Mia. I wonder if all fish have swim bladders, Vivi said. Actually, sharks and some stingrays don't have swim bladders, said Dr. Fisher. It's a good question. You would make a great marine biologist. Vivi smiled. I have more questions, she asked. Let's hear them, said Dr. Fisher. Vivi read her list of questions. Dr. Fisher answered them one by one. Do fish get sunburned? Yes. Why do fish float? They have a swim bladder. Do all fish need gills? Yes. Is a seahorse a fish? Yes. What is the smallest fish? Dwarf minnow. Can starfish swim? No, they glide. Is an electric eel really electric? Yes. Do flying fish really fly? Sort of. They also glide. I had no idea fish were so amazing, Graham said. They're not, Vivi said. They're fantastic. 
That night at home, Vivi observed Bubbles swimming around the tank. Now I know why you can float, she said. Vivi loved science and marine biology, but she loved Bubbles even more. The End That was a cool story. Vivi learned a lot about marine animals like fish, and so did we. If you like this book, be sure to check out the others in the Love Science series that's available at the library. What I like about this book is that it gives us some cool information and an even cooler activity that you can do at home. Today, I'm going to show a different but simpler way to explore a fish swim bladder, just like the kids did in the story. Then we can see for ourselves how fish float and why they float. All you need for this activity are an adult helper, cardboard tube, this is going to represent your fish right here. Now, if you're using paper towel tube, you might want to trim it down to size. You're going to also need a bowl or container for water. This is going to represent the ocean. Be sure that it's deeper than the cardboard tube because we're going to see if it will sink or float. You're going to need some coins. I just used some dimes. Some tape and a balloon. This is going to represent the swim bladder of the fish. First, you're going to fill your container with water in an area that's safe to get wet. Then you're going to put a small amount of air into a balloon and tie it. Now remember, the balloon must fit inside the cardboard tube. So you don't wanna to put too much air in there or else it's not going to fit. So once you've done that, you're going to tape three coins to the bottom of your cardboard tube. I use some dimes, but you could use whatever you have. Now this is important. You might wanna make sure that you put a lot of tape on your cardboard tube before you put it in the water because you want to make sure it sticks there nice and strong. And if you have um, some seams on your cardboard tube, you might want to reinforce that with some tape just so that it can keep it together. If you keep your cardboard tube in the water too long, it might come apart. So do a little bit of reinforcement and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so now that you have your fish all ready for the container of water, make a prediction. What do you think will happen if you put the cardboard tube into the water? Will it sink or will it float? Test it and find out and see what happens. Now, like I said, do not leave the cardboard tube in the water for too long because cardboard's paper, which is porous, it'll soak up too much water and then we won't be able to finish your experiment. So try that. And then you're going to take the cardboard tube out of the water and place the balloon inside the tube and make your prediction. Will the tube sink or float? And then test it out. Like I said, don't leave your cardboard tube fish in the water too long. And you might wanna have a few extra cardboard tubes on hand if you wanna try this experiment again. What did you discover? Now you can explore. Try this activity again with different amounts of air in the balloon. You can also try attaching different types of coins to the cardboard tube fish. Now, how did these changes affect how the fish could float? Try it out for yourself and find out. I'll put a link to the video demonstration of this activity in the description box below, along with step-by-step directions. What's happening? As we learned in the book, some fish have a swim bladder, and these fish can control the amount of air that's in their swim bladder. So they can take extra air if they want to float to the top, and they can let out some air if they want to dive deep. Pretty cool, right? Would you like to explore some more? Try your own sink or float experiment. Find items that are safe to get wet, make a prediction, and then find out on your own. What did you discover? 
Were there any surprises? Here are some suggested items like bath toys, pencils, crayons, and more. Use your imagination and curiosity and find out on your own. If you thought that the field trip to the aquarium was cool, then check out the Page Turner Adventures Virtual Field Trips, where you can meet some more marine biologists. Those are people who study plants and animals that live in the sea. You can find them in our summer reading program in the mission sections of the Read Squared app or website. I'll include the link in the description box below. And of course, we have tons of cool fish books that you can check out from the library. I hope you had fun. I hope you keep exploring and I'll see you next time. Bye.